can anyone be an equine therapist or do you need to be <laughs> aware of spiritual psychology and really in tune with your intuition and can any horse be a therapist yeah because great. I know that you've had like master teacher horses and then others like yeah not great to work with yeah great great question it's true I feel like we're all healers we're all intuitive I feel like we all can communicate with animals I feel like we need to practice that and remember that ultimately I my personal preference is that people get trained, right? Which is why I created a certification program because I want people to be trained in what it takes to be successful, what it takes to facilitate well, right? My master's program gave us 26 skills to facilitate. And so I think it's really important that people have some form of mental health or wellness training or background. And especially if you're in therapy, obviously there's licensing that goes into that. I'm not a therapist. But then there's the whole, do we understand the horses and what the horses are actually doing? So we don't use them as tools. We don't say the word use. We're not just putting them through a bunch of mindless activities activities, we're actually seeing them as true sentient beings and asking their opinion and asking for their guidance. And so I love teaching people because I want people to understand like horses need choice. Like all those horses had choice today. They didn't all, and they came over at the right moment. At their own accord. Exactly. I, it was so wild, the dance that was going on and yeah. the information that was, I mean, again, I can only share so much, but like if profound could describe it i it can't even describe how profound it was yeah it's just cool when they have choice and they're really honored you get the best out of mm -hmm. the horses and you get the best for the client so i am all about there's a lot of approaches that are people centered and it's really just about the clients i'm really about the equal energy between the people and the humans and that and what happens in the human animal bond what happens in slowing down and petting a horse what actually happens to your nervous system and to reducing stress like there's great research out now from human animal bond research institute about what happens in this space of connection so we have to have horses that are healthy and connected right to help humans and uh i think it's just important that people do get training but that they find a training that fits for them and what they want to do so yeah i did, like helping people with intuition did you get training I did. Okay. So I worked with my master's in spiritual psychology. Then I did equine experiential education, which was really a focus on corporate. And I love working with corporate groups, too, because I think they could really benefit from this and yeah. the mindfulness of it all. And just the culture. You shift the field. It, that's right. You're shifting culture. And you're getting people to communicate. I've seen people really celebrate each other. Like I have specific celebration exercises because they're in a field where they can do that. And then there's just a lot of like love and connection and emotion. And, and then it's a safe space. And so then people go back and they have more connection at the office. They have better communication. So I did it, my training specifically in that, but I've also studied with like, I don't know, 20 different horse trainers. So I could learn all different types of what the horses are saying. I always go back to what are the horses teaching? So my mare, who was a master teacher, she passed in 2017 she taught me so much and then when she left when she passed i feel like i got a lot of her gifts like i feel like she's around me when i work she comes through me so that's my other piece and so yes horses can do this but some are definitely way more gifted than others yeah <laughs> similar to humans Spectrum. Right. rose yeah. rose was amazing today yeah and that's an example of rose you say a grandmother energy she holds that crone wisdom like that older wise woman wisdom and that wise woman medicine which is give from the overflow don't deplete yourself feel fill yourself up and give from that place whereas you know her baby's one and is still testing boundaries and you know wants to play doesn't understand that we're not horses you know that we're humans so it's like not everyone will even work with a one-year-old i trust her i've watched her work before and we've worked with her across gates but Ultimately, it's like knowing how to evaluate a horse for this work is important too. But like the minis are so talented and bring up different things. Every horse has its own contribution to yeah. make. One, like a couple of things. I thought it was really cool that you trusted that I would be powerful enough to work with Sparks because she is like, she was like getting a little aggressive with you with her healing or her playfulness with you at a certain point. And and then she kind of came over and later because I had gotten so much confidence working with Rose and she was doing the same to me but the fear was gone and and I knew that I she was receptive to my boundaries and my energy and my 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 
pushback. So just that exercise alone. And then it just reflected back to me like, I've got a very powerful, strong little four-year-old. And she challenges the crapola out of me and like pushes my buttons, triggers me, you know, and I, and I do my best, but it just was like, of course I need to work with an immature one-year-old giant horse <laughs> because yeah. I sometimes feel like we just entered this four-year-old power struggle phase and I need to brush up on my conscious parenting because I'm just like, I mean, what do you do when they refuse to put on their pants and screaming bloody murder and don't want to go to school? Like, yeah, I got a full day at two podcasts and this, yeah. that and the other thing. And like, I can't, I cannot reschedule everything. So like, right. you know, but I'm, I'm not going to physically force my child into to pants or, you know, what do you do? So I just thought it was so interesting um, that we had all of those dynamics. Like Rose showed me what it is to stand in the wisdom and the power of the feminine, which is within me. Um, Spark showed me that I, it, the power struggle isn't there if I stand grounded, yeah. breathe, and assert myself in a loving way. Yeah, She, you know, kind of, and, and I, I, I witnessed that with Riley too. Um, so I just got to remember that, you know, but if she triggers me and she sends me in a fight or flight, then she's going to win that battle because she's bigger, you know, and Riley's going to win that battle because she screams very loud. <laughs> but, um, and then we have the two minis and Romeo and Tess and Tess is this little blonde mini, but you said she was the mover. She was the smallest horse out there besides the little burrow. And she, she was the one that moved everyone. She was the one behind people just moving into different formations and you were like Tess is the, the one in charge and she's the smallest it doesn't matter her size it's how her um, assessment of self yeah. her self-confidence and self-assuredness is so grounded and powerful and she's just like she owns it and that just like again was exactly the messaging I needed mm -hmm. to step into my power no matter how the world might perceive me and just like when I am in authenticity and alignment, there's not an opinion or a person or a, you know, anything that can throw me off of that powerful, yeah. you know, energetic space. Yeah, it is, it is. I think, the power of the feminine being really, really strong and because we are as women, we're so strong. And then really like kind and gentle and clear at the same time right like which the horses are the lead mare and the horse herd that's who she is like everyone respects and listens and it's not ever a power over dynamic it's a power with it's this whole herd right our whole humanity needs to be safe with each other needs it needs to work for all of us it can't just work for a couple of us so that lead mare which is there for you now in all your relationships like that image and that archetype is there what is what are the components of the lead mare and she takes care of herself first so she can take care of the whole herd mm -hmm. right so and I always say often like what's best for us is best for others and if we don't know can we ask what's for the highest good of all concerned right so it's stepping into that space and like blending energies where else do we get to blend energies the horses are so well synergized and blended they know mm -hmm. how to how to do these things so we have a lot to learn from them Thank you for listening to The Heal Podcast. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories. And make sure you hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for. And please rate and review us so that we can grow and reach more people. Thanks so much and be well.